Hello everyone. So welcome back to the video lectures on image and speech processing techniques. So we have been talking about uh, speech processing. How is the uh, speech produced in humans by uh, verifying the X-ray, uh, MRI scans, right? So we have been talking about uh, fundamentals of speech production in human bodies. Then we were talking about uh, the in English language what are the acoustic phonetics, right? So we will continue this video lecture. Uh, with the acoustic phonetics right so in the previous uh, uh, previous video lecture we have seen that we have all sounds right all the sounds which are like uh, vowels and diphthongs except these two all other sounds are categorized by two distinctive features where the distinctive features are place of articulation and manner of articulation, right? Place of articulation is the uh, how, where is the constriction or where the obstacle is being created and the manner of articulation is the uh, it describes the excitation signal, like the characteristics of the excitation signal source. Uh, what is the characteristics of it? Where is it being created, that uh, excitation signal? So that defines the manner of articulation, whereas a place of articulation defines where the obstacle is introduced, right? So based on these two, all the sounds have been uh, divided, right? So basically, we had uh, 48 we had 48 phonemes in English language that we have converted into only 39 sounds. Out of those 39 sounds, we had two types of sounds, which was like continuant sound or non-continuant sound, right? All these continuant and non-continuant sounds can be divided into vowels, diphthongs, and the other sounds which we'll be doing, uh, getting to know in this video lecture, right? So in this, vowels and diphthongs are important. Rest of the sound signals we have characterized based on these two features. How are where is the place of articulation and manner of the articulation, right? So this was based on this we were able to uh, differentiate. So why are we going for these distinct two features? Is like they provide a mechanism to express uh, how the sound has been generated in the human vocal tract, right? So when we get to know the understanding, when we get to know how is the sound, say suppose vowels, diphthongs or semi-vowels, uh, nasal sounds, how when they are created, if we get to know what are the, uh, what is the excitation signal, how, where is the construction formed. So when we are trying to replicate the vocal tract using digital signal processing filters, and uh, transform functions, then all these play an important role. So we can differentiate these sounds using these two parameters. So we will uh, go into the distinctive features that, that are available for us, right? So the first uh, is the semi-vowels, right? So what are the semi-vowels? They are have the nature like the vowel sounds. They have the uh, sounds which are very similar to the vowel sound. But what is happening here is, they are produced like a vowel, but the functions are as consonants. So basically, uh, they sound like a vowel sound, but they actually are the consonants in the language. For example, when we say well, when we say the well, uh, pronounce the word well, so we have the sound word wa, right? So which is the very similar to the vowel sound. Whereas when we go for yes, so that uh, has a vowel sound a. Right. So these two are two examples where the semi-vowels are present. Now, when we see there are four types of uh, uh, semi-vowels in which the v and uh, ya sounds, the semi-vowel sounds, they are v and uh, ya sounds, they are often called as the glides and the other uh, semi-vowels which are r and l sounds, they are often called as liquids. So basically semi-vowels can be divided into two types which are like glides and the other is the liquid, right? We have four semi-vowels, so glides are having the uh, ver and ya sounds and liquid is having the r sound and l sound, right? Now, how are they, these are the information that we got to know from the English language, but how are they characterized as? The semi-vowels are characterized by the construction in the vocal tract, but no turbulence is created. So basically, uh, we in the vocal tract when air is passing through, we have created an obstacle. So an obstacle is created 
but there is no turbulence that has been created because of this obstacle we have got a different sound which is called as the semi vowels so that is the reason since there is no turbulence but a construction has been created that is why they sound like vowel sounds right now here the part where this construction is created it is the tongue right so generally for all forms of the semi vowels the tongue tip forms the constriction okay and they uh form the constriction since the tongue is being inward the constriction that has been uh, generated do not totally block the air flow okay so if we, i have a vocal tract of this sort i can place my constriction completely blocking the air flow like here right or other way around i can have a constriction which is just blocking a part of it but we have a small opening where the air flow can pass through but it will have a different direction so such type of obstacles which are being created it is that is required for semi vowels and this kind of obstacle is created by the tongue tip right so when we see the articulation configuration of the semi vowels that have been the sounds how are they created so we see here uh we can see this is the tongue and this is the mouth right so if we clearly observe two here uh, two parameters we are going to observe here so let so if we see for v and uh, v y r and l sounds we have the mouth to be opened nowhere the mouth is closed so we are creating a orifice or a small opening through the mouth for the air flow to be passed out whereas the tongue positions are placed at different positions for example when we saying wa tongue is placed at the uh, back end palate top back end palate and when we say ya the it is the tongue tip is touching the upper palate and when we are uh, saying ra the tongue tip is rolled and it is touching the front upper palate when you are saying la it is touching both the uh, upper palate and the back palate whereas this this mouth is being created for the smooth flowing of the or air flow to be passed out and the obstacle is created by the tongue tip where it is placed so based on the positions uh, different sounds uh, positions of the tongue tip different sounds have been generated now if we see more clearly we see that they have semi vowels have the properties which are similar to the corresponding vowels but with more pronounced articulations so what actually happens here is when we see the waveforms or the spectrograms we see that they have the similar performance or similar graphs as the vowels but more pronounced articulations what does that mean is the position where the uh, tongue is placed how is the mouth opened is it wide open it is having a narrow opening or is it like uh, stretched out so all these positions make a differ in make a difference in the vowel sounds so that is why we are saying that pronounced articulations are required right if we see more closely uh to the semi vowels we see this the semi vowel wa is closest to the sound u like in boot right and the semi vowel y is simi uh, similar to the sound vowel sound i right this r sound is similar to the vowel sound in bird okay and next the semi vowel l is closest to the sound o in the vowel sound so these are the that is why we are saying that they are to be semi vowels so these are very similar to the uh, vowel sounds as we have seen here so if we see try to see them in the form of a spectrograms uh, which is the frequency domain representation we see that we have a transition here if we see we see a transition between uh, the say first form and frequency in the second form this kind of a connection is called as the semi vowels right so this basically defines the semi vowel spectrograms where we can see the transition from one spectro one vowel sound right so this vowel sound is very similar to the uh, semi vowel sounds right 
Now, these the semi vowels can also be characterized by the gliding transition of the vocal tract area and uh, uh, I mean, like gliding transition of the vocal tract area function, right? So, what does it mean when we are talking about each phenonyms, right? So, what is happening is how the smooth movement of the one uh, phenonym to another, so that is characterized by the gliding nature. So, how smoothly they are passing off from one phenonym sound to another. So, the semi vowels can be also characterized by this gliding nature. And it plays an important role in defining the characteristics. So, right, so we have to know how smoothly they are moving from one phenonym sound to another. So, based on that, the articulation positions are differing, right. So, based on this, this can be characterized. When we see the same from the uh, when we see the uh, spectrograms, we can conclude few points which are saying that like this V sound and L sound are more confusable because they uh, have a spectrogram which is very similar to each other, right? Now, and the other thing that we have seen is V is having the low first form and frequency and second form max with a rapid spectral level decrease for the frequencies. What does it mean is like when we have the first form and frequency, it is very low. And for the second form and frequency, the spectrogram is rapidly decreasing. Right? So, that is what we have observed here. Let me just erase it here. So, what are we seeing this? This is the low first form and frequency. And it is rapidly decreasing it to the second form and frequency. Right? So, the second resonance frequency with the rapid spectral level decrease for the frequencies right now this l sound is characterized by low first form and frequency and the second form and frequency has lot of frequency energy right so if we check from here if we check from our uh, spectrogram we see that it is the low first form and frequency and the next the next it has the high energy right so it is having high energy this can be seen from the spectrogram next what we can see this y is characterized by low first form and frequency and a very high second form and frequency only this uh, y occurs only before the vowel in the initial position of a syllable since this y is having low first form and frequency and high second form and frequency because of this reason the sound to y is always used or mostly is used where before a oval in the initial position of a syllable because of these two reasons it has been used in this way so if we see the spectrogram we can see clearly that we can see the clearly that it has the low first form and frequency and a high second form and frequency right so when we come for this r sound r is having both low first form and frequency and low second form and frequency and the transition is the gliding is very uh, the distance or the time taken to glide from one phenomenon to other second phenomenon sound is the time taken is very narrow so you can almost consider it to be so low both the form and frequencies are close to each other right now the next type of sound is the nasal sounds. Nasal sounds are mostly produced by the glottal excitations and the vocal tract is totally constricted at, at some point. Okay, what is happening here is when we have the uh, lungs, if you remember, we had a block diagram which is having the lungs, then we had the pharynx, then we had the uh, nasal cavity, Next, we had the oral cavity. Differentiating between the nasal cavity and oral cavity, we had the velum. So, now uh, when we want to generate nasal sounds, what is happening is the glottal is having the, it is generating the excitation signal and the vocal tract completely is completely all throughout, it is completely blocked by a constriction. And that is only between the oral passage. Now here for generating the nasal sounds, the velum is to be lowered. So what we are having is the velum is lowered, right? So velum is lowered means it is completely open for the 
for air to be passed through the nasal sounds right so the air flows through the nasal tract and sound is being radiated at the nostrils so when velum is lowered this whole of this air is passed through the nasal cavity and a sound is being generated the oral cavity is constricted so basically here by closing the uh, constriction here what is happening is it is totally constricted but it still acoustically coupled to the pharynx so what happens here is since we are velum is closed it doesn't mean that if the velum is closed we are not creating two different parts like oral and the pharynx cavity like that so but we are not creating such uh, disoriented or uh, uh, disjoint sets of that sort we are trying to generate two different cavities but they are still linked by sound waves which are acoustically which we are calling it to be acoustically coupled right now here the mouth since if the oral cavity is completely constricted this mouth serves as a resonant cavity that traps the sound energy so since the mouth is completely here the oral cavity is constricted the whole of the acoustic energy is captured in the oral cavity we have three types of nasal consonants by which the uh, oral tract at which the total construction is made based on their positions we have three different consonants what are those are we have the sounds ma the constriction is at the lips we have sound na where it is uh, constriction is at the back of the teeth then we have the na sound which is forced upon that constriction is just forward of the velum so we have three different sounds of the uh, nasal consonants ma na and uh, force na where we have the three different obstacle positions like we had it in semi vowels based on the tongue tip how is the tongue tip we have different sounds here also based on how uh, where actually the oral tract is creating that obstacle right so basically where is the total acoustic energy captured that area based on that area we are creating different sounds for m the construction is created at the lips and for na it is at the back of the t in this sound it is at the forward of the veil right so when we see the clear when we try to see the spectrogram of a nasal consonants we see a uh, it consists of a low resonant frequency it consists a low resonance frequency which we can see from here right it is having a low resonance frequency and this spectrum region we have which has no signal energy right so this is a spectrum energy or uh, spectrum uh, area where there is no energy that is called as the holes in the spectrum these holes are created because the oral tract is totally blocked at some point of the construction so when we are creating the total obstruction that is having uh, the whole of the energy is captured at that point so we are when we are trying to plot or when we are trying to capture the energy what is the speech generated at that point there is no energy so when we are converting into the spectrograms plot we are able to plot, see this holes so this holes depict the uh, point of constriction of the nasal tract and amount that is uh, amount of energy that is saved in that uh, vocal tract uh, constriction area so nasal cavities or nasal consonants basically have two important parameters when that we can observe from the spectrogram first is the low first form and frequency and the holes in the uh, spectrograms right next sound the sound that can be uh, differentiated is the unvoiced fricatives what are those unvoiced fricatives are they are produced by the exciting of the vocal tract and that uh, how are we trying to produce them by using a steady air flow and since we have a steady air flow this becomes like they start vibrating at the point of the constriction right so what actually is happening here is we have the vocal sounds okay we have the sounds 
which are called to be unvoiced fricatives why are we calling it to be an unvoiced fricatives is the vocal tract is excited or it has a steady air flow which is being generated and that steady air flow becomes turbulent or they start vibrating because we are creating a constriction we are creating an obstacle right so if we observe here from all these three uh, all these three we have, which you have uh, studied right till now we have seen that at one point or the other a construction or an obstacle is involved so based on this obstacle how are the sounds being generated so if you see here in semi vowels we have no turbulence created right now in the nasal sounds the construction is created at one point but the air is not in the oral cavity is going towards the nasal cavity that is the second type right because of this constriction the this air is flowing to the nasal cavity then we produce the nasal sounds if we have a oral cavity a constriction is created an obstacle is created but there is no turbulence but we have a steady air flow then that sound is called as the semi vowels but when we come for the unvoiced fricatives we have a steady air flow but at the uh, obstacle we are creating a turbulence so such kind of sounds are called as the unvoiced fricatives so what are those unvoiced fricative sounds are f t s and z right so these are the four fricative sounds or sh sound right s and sh sounds so the location at where the constriction is created based on that different sounds of fricative sounds are produced so again here the uh, constriction area is the tip of the tongue and the mouth right so tip of the tongue and the mouth position so where is the constriction created is basically because of your mouth position if the mouth is opened then the tongue is playing a role where the constriction is created so in your first sound in your first sound the mouth is uh, uh, closed and your tongue is uh, sorry the mouth is closed so your uh, constriction is created whereas you say t sound the tongue is touching your upper palate that is creating your uh, constriction area when you say s sound it is again here your tongue is touching the your teeth so that is creating your uh, uh, constriction area when you say sh here again the tongue is playing your uh, tongue tip is creating your constriction now what we are uh, seeing here is the as we have said the constriction is near the lips the t sound is near the teeth and is in the middle of the oral tract and where is the sh is near the back of the oral tract so the tip of the tongue plays here an important uh, parameter where the constriction is being created as well as your mouth position how is mouth widely opened or not so based on these three or uh, these two parameters different sounds are created which are called to be unvoiced fricatives now when we are talking about the uh, how is the unvoiced fricatives uh, sounds are created we have the uh, two uh, two cavities here where we have one uh, source of noise at the construction but that separates the vocal tract into uh, two cavities so wherever the construction is created the vocal tract is divided into uh, two parts if the sound is radiated from the lips that is from the front cavity so the front cavity we are creating the sounds the sound is radiated from the lips the back cavity serves uh, to trap energy and thereby introduce anti resonances into the vocal output so the back cavity when we are trying to create two parts or two cavities the front cavity is first cavity is just for uh, producing the sounds whereas the back cavity produces the anti anti resonances which are which can be seen in my spectrograms right so when we see the spectrograms we can see that it has again a low first form and frequencies and we have the spectral hole not complete uh, the spectral holes are completely blocked it is not uh, completely uh, blocked we don't have a part of energy at the higher frequencies right so this kind of spectral holes we have and these spectral holes are basically similar to the nasal cavity so when we compare the unvoiced fricatives and the nasal sounds we see that there is one cavity where the energy is trapped so that is why we get the spectrum 
holes and the other cavity is creating the sound because we are trying to capture the energy we are creating the anti resonances which we can see in the form of my spectral holes right the next type of sound is the voiced fricatives so what are these voiced fricatives are they are the counterparts of the unvoiced fricatives now how are they differing from their voiced unvoiced to count uh, unvoiced fricatives is that we have two excitation sources so if in my previous case we have seen that if a construction is created we have the front cavity being generated or first cavity is for generating the sound and the back cavity just captures the energy right like in our nasal uh, sounds here what are we having is both the first cavity as well as the second cavity act as the uh, generation act as these excitation sources where a sound is being created such type of sounds are called as fricative sounds voiced fricative sounds what here how is the second uh, uh, how is the second constriction part or the second cavity is uh, creating the sound is how is it creating or acting as an excitation sources the vocal cords will vibrate here and since vocal cords are vibrating that cavity is called as the one excitation source and the other excitation source is the point where the glottis is begun uh base the uh, glottis is generating the sound so that becomes a turbulent in the neighborhood of the constriction and this behaves as the second source of the excitation so in the voice fricatives vocal cords are vibrating because of this they act as the one source after vibrating when they are vibrating a turbulence is created in the surrounding area that turbulence or that vibration uh, that movement creates an other so kind uh, other source which is the second source of excitation so when we have two kinds of so excitation signals or excitation sources in voiced fricatives so when we try to see the uh, spectrograms here again we see that a low spectrogram or low first formant frequencies are observed and we have the two kinds of sources where it is vibrating so that is why we have a thick area or a thick uh, spectral area where both sources are vibrating so this kind of uh, spectrograms can be related to my voiced fricatives right next type of a sound is the voiced stops <coughs> which we are basically calling it to be voiced stops or consonants what are these consonants they are non uh, continuant sounds what are non continuant sounds we have seen in my vi previous video lecture the non continuant sounds basically have the vocal cord a uh, vocal tract to be uh, uh, changing with respect to the time so such type of sounds where the vocal tract is changing with the time so uh, those are so called as the non continuant sounds they how are these voiced stops are created as we are building up a pressure behind a construction so basically we have a construction uh, or an obstacle here and here we go on building the pressure at this point then suddenly we release this whole of this uh, pressured or pre build up uh, air at one uh, one force they suddenly we release the force so those kind of sounds we are calling it to be the voiced sounds so for those examples are b d and g so what is happening here is when we are trying to pronounce here say suppose b we are trying to uh, this are the articulation position so if you see here clearly uh, for b sound we are trying to close our mouth so that is acting as the construct uh, the obstacle place so back of our, our lips this is the uh, mouth here so the back of the lips the air goes on pressure builds up and as soon as we open out uh, open our lips the air pressure rushes out so because of that rush out of the air we are able to create the sound b so similarly for d and g so what happens here is uh, the 
we are having a total constriction in the tract so there is no sound radiated from the lips initially there are no sounds which are being created uh, when we are closing our lips right so when we try to plot the spectrogram or the it has the low energy at the uh, first point so that when we are trying to create the sound uh, movement of the air so we have a continuous flow of my air flow which is in my second formant frequencies so such type of sounds are called as the voice discords since the stop sounds are like basically non continued so they have they are dynamic in nature and the properties go on changing with respect to time and the shape place of my vocal tract next type of sound is the unvoiced sound unvoiced stops here the unvoiced sounds are similar to the voiced counterparts of my uh, voiced counterparts of my uh, voiced stops right voiced stop and the unvoiced are counterparts to each other now during the period of the total closure of wherever we are creating the uh, constriction the pressure builds up the vocal cords do not vibrate so when we are trying to create a construct uh, when we are trying to create the obstacle the vocal cords when they are vibrating and the air pressure builds up and when this uh, obstacle is removed the whole air rushes out then that kind of a sound is called as the voiced stop whereas when we have come to this unvoiced stop when an obstacle is created the vocal cords stop uh, vibrating and the air pressure goes on uh, building up so at one point at one point the pressure will stop increasing because the vocal cords are not vibrating so the pressure cannot uh, increase after some point so after the period of the closure so when it is opened the air pressure is released and we have a brief interval of frication so what happens is uh, we have slow movement of the air after that there is a sudden movement of the air so when so when we sl slowly open our mouth so we have first slow movement then a sudden uh, force of the air so due to this a turbulence of the uh, escaping air is created since the vocal cords are not vibrating at one point the pressure stops building up so when the because of that when we op when a, the obstacle is removed the air rushes out so when the air rushes out that rushing of air creates a turbulence in the uh, turbulence in the air that is coming out of the closure so that is called as the period of the aspiration right so this period of aspiration is seen before the voiced excitation becomes this kind of a period of aspiration is seen in the form of voiced excitation when the uh, glottal excitation or the pulse periodic uh, uh, quasi periodic signal is created before that we see uh, small segment where the air is being pushed out because of after closing for a some point the air is being pushed out from the obstacle and because of the pushing a uh, turbulence is created in the uh, previous or the coming out of the air and at uh, during those point the vocal cords are not vibrating so these kind of sounds is created in the uh, sounds are called as the unvoiced stops so basically if we have a voice segment so we have a voiced segment we have the this from here we have the voiced segment so before this before the voiced segment is being created we have a small turbulence of the sound which we are calling it to be the unvoiced uh, unvoiced stops right so basically we have seen different types of uh, distinct features of the sounds uh, what are the distinct features the first type is the semi vowels then we have when we talked about the nasal then we talked about the unvoiced fricatives then the voiced fricatives stop and unvoiced stops so uh, all these features all these unvoiced uh, distinctive features of the sounds which are discussed till now all those have the uh, important parameter which is the place of the articulation where is the obstacle being created so because of this kind uh, obstacle created how is the air uh, differing in its position right so what in the first point if we see in the semi vowels 
let me just go back and summarize the whole completely so in semi vowels what is happens is when the uh, obstacle is created the semi vowels are uh, created because there is no turbulence created by the air right so whereas when we go for the nasal sounds the air because of the obstacle it has re rerouted it is not going through its original position or original flow it has uh, changed its direction towards the nasal cavity because the velum has been lowered so such types of sounds are called as the nasal sounds when we come for the unvoiced fricative we are having the uh, uh, uh we are having the obstacle at one point and because of that we are having the steady flow which is usually happening because of the steady flow and the obstacle a uh, turbulence is created the turbulence is created just before the obstacle so at those points we are having the unvoiced fricatives whereas when we come for the unvoiced fricatives the vocal cords are not vibrating Uh, vocal cords are vibrating and we have one excitation source and the other excitation source is because of the turbulence that is created whereas when we go for the voiced fricatives we uh, we don't have the vocal cords to be vibrating right so when we come for the voiced stops we are pressure, we are creating the pressure to be increased so when we are suddenly releasing the pressure we are creating the uh, sounds so that is why we are saying it to be the stop sounds in stop sounds we have the voiced sounds and as well as the unvoiced sounds right so these are the voiced sounds and unvoiced sounds are counterparts to each other whereas in fricatives again we have voiced voiced fricatives and unvoiced fricatives which are counterparts to each other so this is the basically how we have different sounds in english language so first sound is the vowel sound second is the diphthong third is the semi vowels then we have nasal sounds stop and fricative sounds again stops have two different types voiced and unvoiced sounds fricatives have two different types which is fricative and unvoiced fricatives so all these are the different sounds that are existing in in our english language right so Uh, this is the book from where you can find further information which is digital processing of speech signals by rabinar so which is the standard book right thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates